Hi, everybody. It's Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. It's good to have all of you with me. Right out of the shoot, I want to remind you, the longer you wait to sign up for the newsletter, the more information you're going to miss. So the newsletter is easy to sign up to. Please subscribe at drlorieve.com. It's free. You just have to give us your email and we'll send it out to you. But if you wait and keep waiting, you're going to keep missing things. So hopefully you'll do that. Example, I'm going to be in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania doing a live event this weekend, multiple days. You know, if you were signed up for the newsletter, you would have had that information weeks ago and you would have been able to plan to come see me. So sign up for the newsletter. Okay. Got lots of guests with me here today and I'm happy to look at their art antiques and collectibles fill you in on what to look for, and of course, appraised values. Your questions, I want the questions from, of course, the audience if we can, so type in those questions. Let's see, Native American bracelet, it's really pretty significant and large. Hi, how are you? Hi, Dr. Lurie. Hi. So Hi. What, what's your name and where are you calling from? I'm Jeff Hall, I'm from uh, Victoria, BC. Nice to see you, Jeff. Nice to see you too. Okay, so tell me now, the rest of you, if you have questions about this, get typing. Type them right in there so I can answer the questions while I talk to Jeff about his piece. All right, let's see what you've got. Is this particular piece, Mark, I like the weight of this, Jeff. How did you acquire it, hon? It, uh, this is from my late mother. Oh, I see. It's very beautiful. So now, was she a collector of Southwest? Was she a collector of Native American pieces? Uh, she had a few pieces, yes. Okay, this is pretty significant. This is this is like something I'd wear. I like the big, big cuff bracelets, right? Exactly. Okay, is it marked? Uh, it is marked. It's marked Sterling and uh, LB. Oh, okay. So we can look up, of course, the um, the jewelry maker's marks. There are a lot of uh, sources to do that with respect to the Native American maker's marks. A couple of things that we look for, first of all, large-scale, big pieces of turquoise. So... You know, bigger is better in this particular case. They're really pretty large. So the largest one is almost two inches. Uh, it's one and a half inches. Yeah. Okay. So that's great. That's a nice big piece. And I see, I like the veins, you know, I like to see the veins and of course the stone, a lot of people like, um, you know, the, the ones that are, that are not all of that, but I like to see the contrast. A lot of people like that. Um, so it's Mark Sterling. So have you weighed it? Uh, no, actually, I haven't weighed the okay, entire Okay, so that's going to be one of the things that you might want to think about. And a lot of you are talking about, you know, sterling. You know, the, the silver, the silver, the price of silver is a little bit lower than we'd like to see. Gold is still pretty, holding pretty well. But basically, that's what we're seeing. No, veining is not preferable in turquoise. It's not better one way to have less or more. But certain mines of turquoise, good question, Joanne, and thank you for the questions. Certain mines where they're mining turquoise will have a, a specific... Uh, characteristics or traits. Some of them are very, very almost only the color blue of turquoise. Some of them have significant veining. Some of them don't. It just depends. Um, uh, so basically, it's not a better or worse. It's basically what you like. I like the size, right? I do like to see the veins. A lot of people also like Bisbee turquoise, which is usually less veiny. Um, so you're looking at that. So that's cool. Um, a couple of things about this. First of all, I was talking about the silver situation. Silver, sterling is a little bit lower than it has been. However, the silver market goes up and down just like anything else. So you're looking at a piece here where the silver is going to be pretty significant because of its size. Now, it also has a very nice punched out work. Oh, Elizabeth wants to know how old it is. I think it's old pawn jewelry. I think it dates between 1945 and 1965. Will that work within your family history? Uh, probably, yeah. 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 So I would say that's about what it is. How do I know that? Here are some of the lists of the characteristics that you should look for if you're looking at old pawn. And I wrote an article about this on my website at drlaurieb.com under the research tab. Old pawn Native American jewelry. First of all, the ballet. That's those three little balls together. It's called ballet. Um, three balls together. That repeated form that you see in between is oftentimes it looks like that prior to the 1970s. After the 1970s, they're usually little leaves. You have a lot of rope work. Notice the twisted rope that goes around. We can see that as well. The other things that you can see here is you can see, of course, um, elements like leaf forms, flower forms. And on the other side, there's scroll work around each edge. And then the other side, you've got, yeah, pretty significant leaves with a flower form in the middle. 
all indicative of Southwestern jewelry, usually jewelry that we'll see coming out of areas like Arizona, New Mexico, and the like. Value Now, a couple of other things. Um, somebody asked how old it is. That's what I think the age is. I like that it's marked. We'd have to take a look and see what we can find out about the actual maker. But I would say that value on this piece all day, every day, about $900. It's beautiful wow. and big. Okay. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. It's gorgeous. Thanks Thank for being with me. Thanks. Bye-bye. My pleasure. Yeah, that's a gorgeous one. Characteristics like it has a big, of course, big uh, stones, a nice amount of uh, silver and old pawn. But anyway, now your questions. Thank you for those questions. I like them when we see the object because then we can interact with the object and I can teach you faster and better. So that's great. So um, if you have somebody says they have a, a brooch, um, similar kinds of things, similar uh, uh, artist names, remember that just because you have the same initials or, or what looks like a similar mark may or may not be the same person. So that's what I want you to, re to remind you about as well. Sorry about that. I jumped ahead. <laughs> so my guests are here and uh, I appreciate all of you being here. And, uh, you know, a lot of you are taking classes. Jeff, actually, I will, I will tell a tale out of school. Jeff, of course, took one of my classes. I think a couple of my classes. And, uh, you know, but classes are a lot of fun because we all get to hang out together and you get to talk to one another and also, you know, get your appraisals or maybe you want to take the selling class and learn how to sell tips about that coming up too. But um, it is a nice environment and it's a fun time to be able to get to know each other as much as have a couple of hours of me to yourself. <laughs> so check out the classes too. They're at drlaurieb.com. Um, a lot of you have been good. A lot of you have been kind enough to be wearing sweatshirts and telling me that you enjoy the, the Dr. Lori Says mugs and the merchandise that you can purchase. So um, I hope that you'll pick up that as the holidays get closer um, if you need some gifts for friends and family. But I always say treat yourself. Get yourself a, a Dr. Lori Says t-shirt first. My guests are here. Let's see what they've got. Well, there's a chair, a little black chair, nice and quiet on its own. And don't forget, I need clear backgrounds. Nothing in your background, you know, nothing in your background would be helpful. And then also, um, remember, nice light would be helpful too. Let's take a look at this piece of um, at this piece of jewelry. It looks like it's gunmetal, and it looks like it might have some set stones. Could be yes. citrines, but also could be amber. They could just be glass of that color. Let's take a look. Hi, what's your name? Hi, Dr. Lori. I'm Tatiana. Hi, Tatiana. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Tell me about your bracelet. Uh, it's a Givenchy bracelet. So it's a Givenchy, bra it's a Givenchy bracelet. Is it marked? Is it marked signed yes. on? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right here. It's mm -hmm. on the clasp, it says it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it all capital letters or is it capital and lowercase letters? Uh, all capital. Okay. Does it say Paris next to that particular mark? No. Mm -mm. Okay. So a couple of things that I want people to look for. So you, you have a piece that you think may be a Givenchy bracelet. We want to make sure if we have something authentic or not. And I want to remind you about authentications and such. A lot of people will say, I don't think that's real. I think that's real. I went to eBay and I found that. Let me tell you something. You know, the same way you're going to eBay when you don't know what you have, all the people, all the people, many of the people on eBay, in fact, may not know what they have either. So I want you to be aware of that. You may be, you may be following the blind in this particular case. Mm -hmm. So that particular piece, can I see the back of it? Because construction is very important when it comes to these yeah. high-end designer costume jewelry pieces. And there are a lot of fakes. How did you they acquire you? How did you acquire yours? I got it at Savers Thrift Store. Okay. It was a 50% off day. Got it for $3. <laughs> you got it for $3. Okay. So $3, you can't go wrong at $3 in my yeah. opinion. You just can't. So a couple yeah. of things. First of all, I will say, first of all, the Givenchy mark is typically on the bar, not on the clasp. So is yours on the bar mm -hmm. of the clasp or the clasp? It's on the clasp. It's, it's on the clasp, right not the right bar. Here. Okay, okay. Right so that's one of the things that would give me pause. I might say, okay, I've got to look a little deeper here. Okay. That's mm -hmm. one of the things I'm looking at. The other thing is the metal work is nicely done, and mm -hmm. but the actual stones, can we see the stones? Get they a little are fake. Go. I, I, got the uh, I got the time of tester that you recommended, and they show glass. They're just glass. Right. 
So the Presidium gemstone tester would show glass. A diamond um, tester no. is for a diamond, oh, diamond tester, tester is for testing diamonds. Okay. So okay. know the difference of how these particular pieces work. So, but that one says it's glass, and we wouldn't expect them to be precious gemstones. We would expect well, them to be glass. I didn't use presidium and use the gem. Uh, you use the diamond tester. The I understand. Diamond tester. I understand. Yeah. So that's basically what we're what we're looking at. Elizabeth, I'm getting to it. So basically what I'm looking at here is I the the piece is a very good what we would call faux piece of costume jewelry. It's trying to look like a Givenchy, but it's not a authentic Givenchy costume jewelry piece, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what I like about it, however, is I think that the piece is indeed made in Europe. I think it's made abroad, and I do think that the piece even with those set stones has a lot of craftsmanship, not in the set um, glass pieces, but I do think it has a, a good craftsmanship in the characteristics like diversity of the shapes. The different shapes of the metal are difficult to make and they cost a little bit more money than your run of the mill piece. So they are mm -hmm. trying to make it look like the good stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think for, for $3, you should always take a bar, take a risk on $3 to see whether or not you've got a Givenchy, even if you have that particular mark. Typically, they would have in that time period a Paris mark on them, too. It's mm -hmm. about the time period. So all of those characteristics are important. I like the weightiness of it. I like the color ch uh, choices for the actual pieces of glass that are faceted and cut inside. And here's the kicker. Value on that bracelet is about $70. Okay. So still a good deal, you know, mm -hmm. based on your $3 investment at Savers. Yeah. Great. Thanks for being with me, Tatiana. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yes, Mary. you're welcome. Good luck. So really nice piece. I like that one a lot. And people are going, oh, it's not the real thing. Well, that's not always the real thing. But the costume jewelry pieces, if that were actually a Givenchy, it would be significantly more. My guests are here from all over, and they've got objects, all kinds of objects, and I'm going to appraise them. Let's see what they've got. Hi, Dr. Lori. Hi, how are Hello. you? How are all of you? <laughs> 11, 7, 11. Okay, Apple, it's okay. And then I've got this. Oh, oh, and then we have the dogs. Oh my God, the dogs are here. <laughs> okay. The dogs always, the dogs are funny because I start talking, whether it's here on a video call, and I start talking, and all of a sudden the dogs are like, oh, wait a minute. They say nothing. And then all of a sudden they're like, hey, wait, I want to talk to her. <laughs> so anyway, I digress. I'm sorry. I want to look at the luggage. I want to look at the luggage. Why? Because a lot of you will question luggage and a lot of you will pick up luggage. Sometimes you DIY it, um, and sometimes, you know, suitcases, luggage, and such. Sometimes you're going to DIY it. Some of the most interesting ones that I've seen are when they stack a lot of uh, vintage luggage, and they put a piece of glass on top of it and make it a table. I always think that's kind of cool. Um, but basically, this particular one, I think, is really quite nice. Hi, what's your name? Hi, I'm Sarah. Hi, Sarah. And where are you? And tell me the dog's names. <laughs> it's Lola, um, and I'm from North Dallas. Well, it's nice to see you. So Texas in the house. So yes. what have you got here? And can you tilt your camera down a little bit, Lois, um, or, or the I object can't. up so we can see it? Yes. Okay. I really wish that the, the suitcases, I'm, of course, I travel all the time, and I, of course, have a suitcase. I wish my suitcase had that nice, strong, like, pressed wood kind of hanger. Right, and right. You get to these places, yeah. and you look like you just came, you look like you've been in, when you put on the clothes from the suitcase, you look like you've been in the suitcase. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. They um, don't make them with the hangers like this anymore, I don't think, do they? <laughs> I know they don't. They give you that lousy zipper thing and those funny little, little like things that clip or clap. Thank you, Lori, for the super sticker. Thank you for supporting the channel. Um, I really do appreciate the super chats and super stickers. It helps us. I know you all love the show. I know you all have told me, Dr. Laura, you know, you taught me about this. You showed me that, you know, I, I, you told me something was valuable and I posted it and I sold it for the value. You said I would have sold it for less. So supporting the channel with super chats and super stickers is very helpful and I appreciate it. So thank you for doing that. So Lola and you are sitting here and how did you acquire this piece of luggage? I actually got it at a garage sale several years ago. Is it marked at all? I can't find a mark on it other than on the hardware. Um, the hardware says Eagle Lock Company. Okay. Um, and then on the side of it, it is stamped um, Dallas, Texas. I don't know if you're able to see that. That's I can see a little bit. I can see a bit of a stamp. I didn't mean to step on your words. What did you say, hon? 
That's the only marks that I see on it anywhere. Can you close it? I can. Does it do the locks work? That's one of the things you want Thank to look you. for. Do the do the, the locks, locks work? work? Yes. How are the um, hinges? Did you have to oil the hinges with WD-40 or something? Um, I didn't actually. I just cleaned them off really well. Okay. Um, it doesn't appear to have been used a whole lot um, based on the way that the inside is. Okay. Um, of course, this goes in. I thought it was very interesting though because it opens from the the short end as opposed um, to like a normal suitcase. I have never seen one like that before. The reason for that is because you're going to put a suit or a dress there, and then you'll only have one fold in the middle of the dress at the waist. Right, right. That's that makes the reasoning sense. for that. And then it has this little flap here. Okay. And you're going to close it for me so I can see the top. Take your yeah. time and watch your fingers. Yeah. Not terrible shape. Pretty good condition. How much did you pay for it? It dates to the 1940s. How much did you pay for it? I think I paid 15 or $20. That's usually what we see about 15 or $20. How big is it? Um, it is 20 by 29 and then it's nine inches deep. Oh, it's big. It's yes, big. it's big. Okay. So intended for ship travel rather mm -hmm. than for, of course, well, it could be airplane, but usually ship travel or a lot of things that are going. And those are the types that you're typically going to see when you're going to be in, you know, special places. You're going to go to a wedding. You're going to go to some event where you're going to have a long gown or some long um, tuxedo or something that has a lot of pieces to it. That's what those nice hangers are for, too. Value okay. on it today, about $125. And what did you pay? I paid $20. I, I there you go. $125. I like it very much. Okay. And what era did you say that it was from? The 1940s. So it's 40s? going to be any, yeah, probably around World War II era. Um, okay. That's the short end. And the whole idea is that you open it that way. Hey, love to Lola. Thanks. Thank you so much. I love the dogs. <laughs> I love the dogs. I'm Dr. Lori. This is Ask Dr. Lori Live. I'm looking for your questions. And I'm looking, of course, at your art, antiques, and collectibles. Okay, my event in Bethlehem is a private event. You know what that means? That means that the host who has booked me to appear at that event controls the invitation list. So, in fact, people are saying, can I come? Can you get me in? Um, that, of course, is controlled by the people who have booked me in order to appear and make an appearance at that particular event. There are a lot of events that are public events. They're at drlaurieV.com. At the top of the website, it'll just say events. Click on that. And you can see where, in fact, I am appearing. And I appear all over. You can see it right there underneath specials and shop on your smartphone. It says home and then events. Click on events and go into the events page and scroll down. You'll see all the different events. There's a little link that says details on each event. Click the details because it will give you the details. It'll tell you where is it? How many shows am I doing? Where am I appearing? What kind of, you know, are they they're free appraisals? What's happening? Can you talk to Dr. Lori? That kind of thing. So there you are. Now, charging at an event for my com for my comedy show tour depends again on the folks who are hosting it. Sometimes there is a fee to get into the um, event. Sometimes it's not, but the appraisals are free. You get a chance to get an appraisal for free. So there you go. Um, but you can come and many people have done that over the years. Many of you, of course, have seen me multiple times all over. Thank you very much for supporting the channel with, of course, the super chats and super stickers. I appreciate it. And I appreciate that, Trey. You know, you learn so much from me and you want to show your appreciation. So thank you for that. Um, it really is important and it's necessary um, I wish it weren't necessary, but it's necessary. So if you want us to keep doing this, then of course we do need to see your support. And it's great of you to do that. I'm glad that you're watching. I hope that you're using the binge link because a lot of you will say, I can't find this. I can't find that. I don't know this. Please use the binge link. We spent a lot of time putting that together so you don't have to go crazy and you don't have to rely on, of course, if you get a notification because a lot of that is basically up for grabs. You don't know if you'll get a notification or not. Um, so please use the binge link. It's the big red button on the specials and shop page. Again, click on specials and shop and then scroll down. You'll see the binge link. Take that and copy that link. You can click on it, but if you copy it and go back to it each time, it will in fact um, help you a whole lot. There's a lot of videos. There's a lot of information and it's all going to help you make money or build good collections. So Keely, thank you, Keely. I appreciate that. We've been talking on video calls. 
And don't forget video calls are another option for you. But Keely is nice enough to support the channel. And you know what you're doing? All of those folks who are supporting the channel here with, video, with of course, um, uh, uh, super chats and super stickers are helping everybody else. So I hope that you will all do your part because, you know, it's not fair that only some of you guys are doing your part. So uh, when are you coming to Connecticut? I know I can't wait to go back to Connecticut. You know why? I really want to have pizza. <laughs> I miss the good pizza. I've been in Pennsylvania a long time, um, but uh, I'll be in Pittsburgh. I expect to, of course, be, um, of, of course, my tour goes all over. And uh, I do expect to be back in Connecticut. But again, you got to look on the event schedule because I have to tell you with how busy I am, I take it one day at a time, people. I don't go, oh, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here, blah, 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 you know, because that can make your head pop off. So basically, I take it one day at a time. Uh, check out the event schedule and you'll see all the different places that I am. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. Arizona Life, thank you too for, of course, your super sticker. Uh, it helps, of course, everybody. So I appreciate uh, you doing that. And I appreciate it because that's when, that's how I know, gee, Dr. Lori, what you're doing is helping us. Cause I want you to succeed. I come to Texas. I go everywhere. <laughs> now, a lot of you are probably new and you're saying, oh, you know, I didn't realize that, you know, that, that she comes everywhere. And I say this all the time, but you know, 150 dates a year since 1998, I have been on the road and I continue to, of course, do those, those, public events all over. So yes, Texas. I mean, I've appeared in Dallas. I've appeared in Houston. I've appeared in um, Fredericksburg. I've appeared in Lubbock. I've appeared all over, you know, all over. And those are all just some of the places that come to mind when I think of, of course, being in Texas. So yes, of course. Um, Austin, I was in Austin. So, oh, my guests, I'm sorry. My guests are here. Let's see what else they've got. Yes, I'll come to any place. So if you're like, do you come here? Do you come here? Do you come there? Yes. The answer is yes. So that's absolutely true. Okay, let's take a look at this figurine. We have a nice blue and white vase. We also have a piece that, in fact, looks to have a pre-Columbian form. But let's take a look at the figurine because a lot of you will poo-poo figurines. And I got to tell you, the figurines can bring a lot of money. A lot of people are doing that. So let's see. Hi. Hi, Dr. Laura. It's Veronica in Maryland. Hi, Veronica. It's nice to see you. Hi. I'm sorry. I'm a little under the weather. I'm getting a cold. <laughs> You're getting a cold. You're allowed yeah. to get a cold. You're not allowed to get anything else that isn't a cold. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No other illnesses here. It's a cold and that's the end of it. Yes. So. That's all. <laughs> you all like my pin. Did you notice my pin? It's Snow White. <laughs> my favorite princess, right? <laughs> I thought someone would mention my pin, so I have to mention it to you. All right. Veronica, sweetie, show me what you got. Okay, I got this from a thrift store. I paid $2.50 for it, and it reminded me of uh, the Yadro ballerina okay. figurines, but I don't think it's Yadro. It's not signed anywhere. Okay. Um, Can I see the underside? Sure. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about figurines. Okay, here's what's happening. Do you notice that? Now, is that an actual hole in the bottom? Yeah. Okay, so there was something there that was glued to that, and then there's an actual hole in the bottom. Turn that back so we can see the front of this. And let's talk about what this is and what this isn't. First of all, I want you to look at the hands. A Yadro figurine, if it was a real Yadro figurine, those hands would be separated the way my hand separates. The fingers would be separated, okay? When they're all smushed together like that, typically that means we have a lower quality ceramic firm. Okay. Look at the legs. The legs kind of look like she has cellulite like I do around the ankle. <laughs> do you see that? Do you see it? I think it's, it's kind of it's kind of like almost like there's little tiny bumps in there. It would be smooth if it were a yadro. Okay. Okay. And these are things that I need you to look for. The other thing I do like about it, well, first of all, she's got very large feet. Look at how large and long those feet are. Okay, that's another element. Also notice the sharp lines do not exist in her tutu. Can you look at the underside? Yeah, notice how those lines are not sharp. What I mean is they'd be very, very detailed and sharp. Instead, they're kind of goopy and kind of molded together. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, these are all the things that I want you to look for because this is how you're going to educate your eyes. So we're guessing the value already. Okay, how about some questions on this? What else do you want to know? I like the head. Notice the color. The color is those muted colors that we typically see, of course, of Yadro. So this is a firm that's trying to make it look like a Yadro. Um, look at the face. 
I don't think it's part of a music box. What I think it was part of, I think it's on a larger program. I think it sat on a base and she was attached from the bottom. I think she's Austrian or German. I think she probably dates to the early 20th century. And we're all guessing. <laughs> <laughs> You're so cute. Um, thank you very much for the super chats and the super stickers, Maria, who loves silver. Um, that's what we're looking at. I don't think it's a cake topper, but that's a good guess. Show low, poet. I think, in fact, that it was on a base that was ceramic with other figures, probably a figurine, probably a, um, a ballerina or two that were bigger. As I said, Steve, but you were travel probably um, typing, probably Germany or Austria in terms of where it's made. How tall is it? Um, she is about five six five six inches about five inches yeah. yeah i think she's probably part of a program with others near her i would i don't mind the bottom but you're gonna have to put her on some kind of a base is it is it sharp in the bottom yes rough yeah rough yeah mm -hmm. i think it's i do think it's porcelain i don't and i do think that it is hand painted in the top the hair is definitely hand painted um, I would like to see a little bit more. You'll notice that she has very, very defined abdominal muscles, mm -hmm. right? But not defined muscles in the legs. Unusual for, okay. of course, a ballerina. Realism is very important for Yadros. So in the manner of Yadro, probably made in Europe, I would say five inches, five and a half inches tall. Value on that piece, your guesses weren't too bad, about $75. How much okay. did you pay? $2.50. There it is. Thank you. Is. I like it. Nice to see you. Hey, feel thank better, you. honey. Thank you. Bye. And thank you. And thanks to all of you for your super chats and your super stickers. There's also a tip jar at drlaurieview.com. But we want you to, of course, watch the videos. That will help you guys to succeed. I'm Dr. Lori, the PhD Antiques Appraiser. I'll see you next time.